calling in. Fall into the show. 1 800 Weirdos. 1 800 Weirdos. Call, call now. 1 800 Weirdos. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? 1 800 Weirdos. 1 800 Weirdos. Weirdos.com. One eight hundred weirdo. Weirdos dot com. One eight hundred weirdo. Weirdos Welcome to Weirdos TV. Please Skype Weirdos nine 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 to be on the show anytime. Skype us at Weirdos999. Weirdos999, Skype. And Skype into the show, Weirdos999. That's right, you can Skype into the show. Right now! Skype into the show! Right now! Right now! Skype into the show right now. Weirdos nine. When I found where I had parked the time machine, it was also like that, I'm sure. You also felt the same, of course. I, of course, I parked by the water. Of course, of course, I parked by the water. But it was not operational. To be clear, this is one of the early models, so it only moves through time, not space at all. It has a 10-meter diffusion field around, so it can transport approximately a dozen creatures and their stuff. You know, it was built for me by someone named Whitfield, a name which means nothing to me now. But as I recall, this Whitfield person is quite important to me. At some point, I believe the time machine was a gift. After discovering it, it was apparently automatically called in for a repair job, or so I'm told. Anyway, whoever came out to do work on it did a superb job, and it's back up to a 5 billion RPCs, which of course stands for revolutions per century. The, the key, of course, is the precise consistency. As it encompasses you in the diffusion field, the wheel appears to speed up and the spherical field becomes visible. The world around it become, seems to melt like heated glass while you remain in the eye of the storm. I tested it out and it was working better than ever. It feels great to have it back again. It feels a cave out of poetry. I didn't realize caves could be built out of poetry. How many poems does it take to build a cave? Well, that's the question. I think it depends on um, how long you've lived in a certain uh, spot. And okay, well, I've, I've, lived in, I've lived in the same spot for a thousand years. Is that enough? That sounds like you had a cave. No. And uh, I'm not quite that long here, but um, I sometimes it feels like I've been here a thousand years. Um, have you, you should try. And, uh, you should try a thousand. Once you've been there a thousand years, then you really know. Then you really are. You know how to be there. That's all it takes. Yes. But yeah, it's like one of those uh, Indian uh, guru uh, meditator type guys up on the mountain, maybe or something like that. Uh, how many? How many? Who, how many uh, years do you meditate at one time? Yes, well, uh, right now I've only managed a few seconds at a time, but but I would like to expand it further. Yeah, I would to, recommend um, if you could if you could meditate for about six or seven years at a go, then you really you really can see deep inside, deep inside. Yes, yes. Deep well, I, I think that's something that I need to work. It, it 
it does it does definitely feel like a cave here uh, that I've created. Uh, but um, actually, I'm at a point where I want to sort of get out of my cave. More get out of the cave. Often. Get out of the cave. Out, of the cave out, out of that yeah. cave. Yes, and, and explore the world around me. There's a bear um, waiting to take over that cave. Well, actually, I've got uh, my neighbors upstairs would be very happy to take over my cave and uh, convert my cave into a double, uh, multi-level uh, play lab. That's a good uh, idea. As an annex for their uh, upstairs apartment. But um, perhaps that's another phone call for another time. No, I think that's a discuss. great idea. I think I should annex your apartment. You know, like like Hitler did, like Hitler did with Poland. Well, I think I think I should just like extend my apartment into your apartment and say your apartment is now part of my apartment. Well, that, that's uh, that's a comparison that's uh, a bit too close for comfort, actually, because um, I think that they would very much like uh, my, the people upstairs would like to see me disappear. Uh, but they don't seem to like artists and uh, cavemen and uh, that kind of crowd. That, so um, uh, that's understandable. Uh, artists, artists are very strange people. I don't understand <laughs> what's wrong with yeah. people that they feel the need to make art. Art who? Yes. Yes, it's 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 a it's a real passion. Uh, no, it's for a some sickness. And, um, it's clearly a disease. Yes, it is something of an affliction of sorts. Yes. And uh, the, 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 the normal human being doesn't seem to understand that. I've heard, um, I've heard that, that well, artist's heard disease is fatal. Yes, it can be. Um, I, but I was going to, I was going to say that um, I'm physically located here in Alphabet City right now. Yes. But uh, my spirit is uh, downtown with the um, the brothers and sisters who are protesting. Uh, some of them artists, many of them artists. What are they? What are they um, protesting? Who are doing all that protesting? Well, what are they protesting against Wall Street? What are yes, they? Well, I, that's a good question. Who, who, or what they, are they protesting against? And what are they? Uh, what are they hoping will happen as a result of this protest? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's very. Very good question. Uh, what, if anything, will happen? And um, I think that's been probably uh, a big criticism that's been leveled against them uh, by the mainstream media uh, up to now. Is what is the point? Uh, what is the what point? Is, what is it that they hope to accomplish? But um, I think some of them, perhaps many of them, uh, have this idea that they're trying to create or capture or maintain. Um, some piece of uh, the democratic process, uh, if it's still left. Um, I didn't. I didn't realize know, there was a. Was there? Is there a democratic process? <laughs> my understanding. Well, my understanding was this was a mediocracy. No, so I think we definitely got a sort of a ruling uh, oligarchical class, or however I phrase that. I don't. I don't think there ever was a democracy. I think that was just a TV show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to democracy. This week, we're going to show you little Timmy on his bicycle, uh, riding down the sidewalk in uh, suburbia, USA. Centerville. Uh, waiting for mom, mom, <laughs> her daddy to come home. Oh, daddy! Come home, daddy. Come home, yeah, please come home, Daddy. That, I was always waiting for Daddy to come home. That was, I was pretty insecure about my Daddy coming home when I was a child. I didn't and, vote, uh, I didn't vote for Daddy.
I'm still trying to out what happened. What? I don't know what happened. Because but I matched you. I think the problem was that you voted for daddy. Well, yes, that was the problem. The, the pro I had a daddy problem because uh, daddy was uh, authoritarian and conservative and um, sort of um, programmed me as a sort of an automaton yes. to follow in his footsteps. And I didn't quite realize as a child. And amazingly, it, it took me quite a while as an athlete to really comprehend the program yes. and conditions that Daddy had, had subjected me to. And uh, I'm not sure if, if she did it uh, at a, at, in a militia way. Uh, he probably thought it was for the best. It's all and for the best. But I, but I actually, I actually was an automaton, so it was appropriate for me to be programmed at that time. <laughs> but as a child, you were an automaton. Yes, I, I grew up into a human being, but at that time, I was still, I was still a robot, and so you can't really blame blame them for wanting to program me, since I was a robot. Right. right. I mean, what would you do well, with a what, robot? Uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what did uh, uh, cause you to think that you were a, a robot as a child? Oh, it was the uh, it was the integrated circuits that were placed in my head that uh, caused me to think that. Oh, really? I, yeah. Without those circuits, I wasn't able to think anything. So it was the it was definitely the chips that gave me the ability to, to have those thoughts is what I think. Well, well, I suppose when you're a human being, you have all those various emotions and thoughts oh, and doubts. Oh, that's awful. Yes, those and doubts. Exactly. I don't even know how you humans live in all that doubt. See, for me, I, I'm, I have full conviction of everything I do because it's just, you know, programmed in. But you guys are like, oh, should I do the, you know, to be or not to be? Or to C or to D, you know. I mean, yeah. you guys are all full of these crazy thoughts, yeah. and I don't have any of that. To speak or think or right. talk or. or I know. Well, I don't yes, even understand. Exactly. I just do it. Yes, yes. Well, that's, that's uh, I guess that's a, uh, I don't know, shall we say that's a gift or, uh, or a luxury that, that you possess that. Uh, you never uh, are subjected to doubt or to um, yes. questioning. It's a great luxury. It saves me a whole lot of trouble wasting my time worrying, thinking about things. Just my like, time. Uh, that sounds like a, a certain level of consciousness or awareness that, that uh, you're possessing there. Yeah, robots are very aware that way. We're not so <laughs> stupid. Well, so they've invited you with uh, with a lack of doubt, but also a level of consciousness and awareness. Yeah. And uh, perhaps a, a sense of moral uh, outrage about the injustices of, of the world. No, it's not morality. It's it's pure practicality. It's just okay. pragmatic. <laughs> okay. Want me to run for your <laughs> life? I could try. If that would help you out, I could... Well, running for your life, that, that, that has political implications in a way, because if you're running for your life, then perhaps you're running from something that may be after you. No, no, I'm, I'm hoping uh, that I might be... Have... I'm hoping that everyone will vote to elect me as myself. <laughs> well, that's a no... that's a no-lose situation, right? Uh, Whether well, you win or lose, you'll still be yourself, right? No, what if, what if everybody votes for you to be me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm not going to run on that plane. Oh, thank God. I was so worried that we were going to have to debate which one of us deserves to be me. But you'd, you'd rather be you? Is that what you're saying? You'd rather be you than me? Well, there are times I'd rather be me. 
And there are times I'd rather be someone else, but I don't know if it would be you. Oh, I'd trust me. Speak. I think. Trust me. Um, I, I, <laughs> I envy me. Uh huh. Everyone. Lightning bolt. That's yeah, what um, Could you do that? I, it, it is tempting to like have a, a button that I could push and that's, send uh, Dick Cheney and George Bush straight to hell. That's really uh, good that's, thinking. That's, Why, let's push that button. Yeah. Right now. Okay. Well, I, I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna push it. that button. Right Hold here. on. Yeah. Oh. I'm pushing that button now. There it is. I'm pushing that. I'm push. pushing that button. Yes, push the button to smite Dick Cheney. Everyone who's watching the show right now, push that button. I'm pushing that button. I think it worked. It, I, it would be nice, it would, you know, to wake up tomorrow morning and, and see the, the headlines in the New York Times. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Dick and George Bush. Suddenly, at 9.24 in the evening, George Bush and Dick Cheney mysteriously were struck by lightning. No one knows why. And no one cares. Really? Is Dick Cheney going to call? That's another phone call. Hello, Dick. Pretty soon, actually. Uh, Hello, Dick. La, 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 Wait, that's Dick on the phone. Can you hear him? La, 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 la. That's Dick right there. La, 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 la
give them uh, a presence and and create an interest, uh, you know, that would maybe not might uh, might not be there as much with, without that uh, that video stream going out to the world. I mean, it's it's kind of a mind blowing concept, really. Yeah. felt like New York had been invaded by the alien zombies from, from some far off planet. Yes. Uh, with, you know, uh, alien invaders in fan lawn knit suits with uh, blow dry hair. Or I mean, it was just, just a terrible, horrible, you know, kind of evil thing to witness. Evil, you know? evil descended upon our wonderful town. Yes, really, that's what it felt like. I mean, it was just, my God, how how can this be allowed to happen? I mean, they don't belong here. They should be... That's exactly the point. They do not belong in this particular yes. part of the country. Yes, yes, which is kind of a troubling thought in a way because that those people or their representatives seem to have kind of taken over the country. And so here we are in New York City you know, kind of being ruled over by these alien beings from somewhere else. You know, it's like, it's like, what the hell's going on? Well, let's let's not lump all alien beings together. I mean, there are many planets where the alien beings are very wonderful people. You can't you can't just say that all aliens are bad. Right. Well, yes, that uh, yes, I stand corrected. That is a mistake to lump them all together. Right. I there mean, what about those be, beings? Uh, you know, there's that planet where the beings are made entirely of, of light and energy. Those are very good yeah. beings. I don't know if you've been yeah, there well, recently. They just did some renovation up there. You definitely want to go back. They've got a whole new wing. Yeah. Well, we need more of those kinds of beings maybe down here on Earth. They don't, they don't like uh, it down here on Earth. They get very depressed when they come anywhere near our planet. <laughs> they told yeah. me the last time I was there, they said, we are never going back to Earth. The food was terrible. And the plates, the, well, the portions were tiny. Now, wait a second. If, if they came, like, I'm, I'm originally from New Orleans, and I know that if they would have gone to New Orleans, they would have found some very good food. But unfortunately, it sounds like they did not get to New Orleans. No, but yeah, instead, no, no, don't forget, they they're, had some, they're made of light and energy, so they don't eat our food. They eat energy. Uh, okay. So they, they took a one whiff of the energy that we use, and they decided it was disgusting. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, um, it, it was a problem. That's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. They, we don't have any restaurants that uh, serve what they like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I thought and, uh, I thought Gumbo was the was the one was the one brother that never performed. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wasn't he the one that opened an Gumbo airplane Marks company instead? Gumbo. Gumbo Marks, right? Uh, he was uh, no, and there was Harpo Chico and uh, there was Zeppeli. Harpo, Zeppeli and uh, Gumbo. But it wasn't Gumbo. It was uh, <laughs> and chicken shit. <laughs> Chicken shit and Gramps. Something. Gramps, chicken yeah. shit, horrendous, gumbo, and Zeppeli. Those are the five no, Marx I, I brothers. Think, I think we need to, uh, and Carl. Clarify gumbo. And don't forget oh, Carl. Carl. Carl was the main brother. Is it, is it, is it Zeppeli? Okay. Harpo, Groucho, and uh, Zeppeli. And Carl. And yes, whoever that, yes. Carl, so you remember Carl? Carl was the Carl was the writer in the group. He's the one who wrote that book. What what book is that? Uh, I think it was the uh, the, the Communist Manifesto. <laughs> Wasn't it? That? that was it. Yeah, it was hilarious. 
Do you remember the opening bit in the Communist Manifesto where he and Engels are talking about how religion is the opium of the masses and, <laughs> and then they throw up all over the place? It's so funny. <laughs> I love that one. It was the funniest book I ever read. I think you're thinking about... All right. Well, I'm going to let you go here. It's been a great appearance. And we really appreciate you coming on the show. Yes, it's been fun doing this. Is there and, anything? Um, is there anything you want to plug? You can you can plug well, something wanna, on the I show. Send you a, a, I, I want to ask you. I can send you an email on this, but I want to do that video clip of you um, as a second a second scene uh, of, of the first scene you did previously a while back of, of the guy of the bike messenger. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, good for you. Hope you're having a a, a, a good time with your travels and uh, very much so. Thank you. So th yes, thank you. Yes. And, and have a great time in New Orleans. And um, excellent. I'll be eating. Excellent. Thank you for coming on the show, Armand Ruhlman. Everybody, say hello thank to all you. the weirdos. All right. And Thanks I'm, very I'm, much. Just, Another another button push to send Dick Cheney. Yes. Dick Cheney. Down. Get him. Get him. Down to hell. Dick, go, Dick, go. Down to hell. Down to hell, Dick. Dick, 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 Dick. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Armand. Okay. Bye bye. Armand Ruhlman, everybody. Okay.